This video is going to cover adding some validations to our attachments to make sure that we're only allowing certain file types to be uploaded to the application. Now, as you might recall from a previous episode, we implemented this uh, attachment feature to our real-time messaging app. And if I come down to videos, I should hopefully have a whole bunch of different file types that I can attach here just to make sure that they work. I'll click on all of them. They all get added up and then you get a little scroll bar and I can say test and I can send this entire chat message uh, and then everything hopefully gets sent as you would expect. One issue that was mentioned in a comment is how do you stop people from uploading malicious code? So as you saw there, I grabbed this Premiere Pro uh, project, which in this case is harmless, but if this were a zip file or something else, this could become a problem. So the way that I've been testing this is I have a small pictures folder with my thumbnails and in my thumbnails, I usually have a Photoshop file. So I've just been filtering against Photoshop files. If you don't have a Photoshop file, that's fine. Just save your file as anything, maybe even like a text document and that should work too, because we're not going to be allowing text documents or zips for the, for this case, uh, we'll just be allow listing like images, videos, audio files and stuff like that. So we're going to get started by going into the message model. So we can come into app models and message.rb. And if you don't have this project open, you're just watching this because you're trying to implement this in your own thing. Don't worry about it. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, all you need is your has many attached from active storage. And then you just need to add in your actual validation for it, which works just like anywhere else. Now I'm going to hit con uh, control B to hide the side panel. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is type validate and I'll bump up the font size one. I want to validate the, uh, I'll say validate at underscore attachment underscore file types, just so that the method is clear because I'm getting a little bit cluttered here and this just makes it a bit e easier to keep it organized. So we're going to come in here and I think GitHub Copilot's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting here. You can already see it trying to help. So I'm going to hit tab and then we're just going to talk about this code that GitHub Copilot just generated. So the first thing it does is it checks if the attachments are attached. What this means is it checks if I've even uploaded anything. So if I just put in the word like test here and I send the message, there's no attachment added here. So then this is going to return. This is called a guard clause, which means it's guarding us from hitting this logic down here unnecessarily. So we, we can sort of ignore this for now because it's doing what we need it to. And then it's iterating through each of the attachments because again, we has many attached. So there's multiple attachments. Um, if you don't have multiple attached, you probably just skip this loop and you just do what's inside of it. And then it says, unless the attachment uh, content type is in this list of allowed things. So it's just the same thing as doing like a, if not in there, it's just an inverted form of that. But of course, we added the ability to upload audio, images, video, and other text files. So what I'm going to do here is we have the image JPEG, the image PNG, uh, the image GIF, uh, or GIF if you're trying to start a fight. Uh, video MP4 is fine, but I also want to add video slash MPEG because that's a format that I use for my videos. And then I'm going to add audio slash, and I think I use WAV, but you can also add audio slash MP3. I need to change this to audio. And that's just how you add the file types. Um, there's quite a few of them to explore and look around. But the other thing we need to now change is this list right here is now outdated because it says JPEG, PNG, GIF, or MP4. Um, let's just add a comma after GIF. And let's see what else GitHub Copilot can generate for us. There we go, MP4, MP3, or WAV. So again, really nice to have GitHub Copilot helping out here. Otherwise, I might have to use a couple brain cells and that just sounds like it's torture. Let's now come over to app controllers and the messages controller. So in here, what we're gonna do is after we create the message, we now have a validation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, Maybe this is now not a messages.create and instead it's like a messages.build. And then you just come down here and you say, if at message.save, then I guess we don't want to do anything. Uh, and then we could say else, do something else. 
So if the message saves, uh, really we're not gonna do anything with it, right? So I guess what we do in that case is we just say, unless the message save, um, we can then do a, like a render uh, for, oops, a render for the turbo underscore stream. And then we wanna render a uh, turbo underscore stream dot update. And we will target, I think I called it Flash. I'm not really a fan of that name, but that's okay for now. Uh, we need a partial, oops, a partial. See, so sometimes GitHub Copilot can be less, oops, less than helpful. Actually, I don't know if this is Copilot or, yeah, it looks like it's Copilot maybe. Um, we need a partial, it'll just tab over after we fix this, which is gonna be shared slash message underscore error. And I haven't created that yet. We'll create that in a second. And then we need to pass in a locals and it's gonna be the at message, oops, at message dot errors dot full underscore messages dot join with quotes, uh, comma and a space. And then this is just gonna be our message. So that's gonna grab all of our messages, store it inside of this messages variable. Now we need to go create this partial. So let's go ahead and let's go down to our views and we're gonna create a shared folder. So we stop putting everything inside of layouts. And then in this shared folder, we'll right click new file underscore and we called it message underscore error.html.erb, which creates our partial. Now we need to check, um, I guess we can just do a loop because we have this loop here that should be giving us some info. So let's just do something like a uh, messages.each do message, oops message we can come down here hit end and then in here we'll just do i'm just going to copy this because no one really cares about the uh, html classes that we use for this so feel free to copy this if you'd like to copy the styling i'll also cover how the animations work in a second because we do animate the error message so we just pop in both of those divs and then we pop in the message itself being rendered out through this erb and then we're basically good to go here Let's have this over a bit and my formatter will hopefully clean up something. It doesn't look like it. It's broken. That's fine. So this handles the message, the controller. So the model, the view or the model, the controller, and now the view, but it doesn't handle uh, outside of the partial where we're actually popping this in and where it's going to appear. So I'd like it to pop up right here, right below the nav bar, which is going to require some CSS, but it also requires us to put it in a position it sort of makes sense. For that, we're gonna come to rooms and the index and right below the appearance controller, we'll just pop in the actual turbo frame tag. So I've spaced things out here a bit. It's just a turbo frame tag. It is for the flash and we can actually just change this to message underscore error. And then we'll just double click this to copy it, hit control S to save it, come back to the controller and replace this flash with a message error. So that we're targeting the message error with the partial for the message error. Just looks a bit cleaner that way so that we actually know what this is for. The last thing we now need to do is we need to create the CSS styling. And this is of course the boring part of the tutorial. So I'll try and keep it fast. I'll just copy it in and we'll click quickly talk about it because most of it doesn't matter. So the first thing we need is the message error. And I have that right here. So it's gonna be a message error class with a comment that caused GitHub Copilot to create the animations that I needed because I didn't know how to do this. Uh, but basically we set the position to be absolute. The top is 56, which is the bootstrap size of the nav bar. And the right is set to zero because we're just spanning the entire left right width. The height is three EM because that's just a size that made sense to me. The background color is just the size that I ripped off of the uh, bootstrap styling for alerts. And the Z index is five because I needed it to appear in the front. The animation is set to fade for all of these. These are just different browsers and how they do their animations because everyone's special and they can't just use the actual animation. And then the four words is just the thing that causes it to not reappear every time that you run the animation. Because if you don't have four words, it'll fade in, fade out. And then when it disappears for the final time, because the, the notification is done, it'll then reappear and never go away again. So that's why you use four words right there. So, okay, it's pretty boring. 
We now have the message error text. We have the color, which again is just a random color that I chose off the bootstrap styling. We set the text align to center and we give it a padding top of 0.5 EM. Now for the last part, we gave this a fade animation. So we have to create the keyframes for fade. And this is sort of how it works in video editing as well. You set the original opacity, in this case it's zero, which means it's invisible. You then set it to whatever your target opacity is slightly later. So in this case, I'm setting it to one 10% later, which is 10% of three seconds. And then we leave it alone for the duration. And then when we finally want it to fade out, that's when we set it to the, the op opacity it's been at, and then we fade it out. Reason being, if you don't have this here, for 80% or I guess 90% of the duration, it'll go from zero to 0 0.8 to 0.7 to 0.5, whatever, it'll interpolate, which isn't what you want because you want it to be visible for most of this time. So like for 80% of the time, you want it to be fully visible and then you want it to start fading out. So you have to set this weird keyframe where you're sort of saying between these two periods right here, it needs to stay one. And then after these two periods and before these, that's where you do the fading back and from zero. So we can save that. We can come over here and we can pray that I didn't mess anything up, which I'm sure I did because I did a little improv there and I never follow my notes. So there we go. I did mess something up. It looks like that's message instead of messages. Let me just test this in the console. I'll zoom in. If we do messages. We don't have a messages. So that's something else to look at. Right here, we're passing in messages to the message error. Let's come into message error. This should be messages. I don't know why it's having a problem. Oh, I see. Let's take this. Let's change it to message. And let's come into here. We actually don't need this, but we do need to check to see if the message is defined. So we'll just throw that in real quick. I don't know why I thought this made sense. Now let me refresh and let me try something that we know doesn't work. I'll throw in the bootstrap PSD. And now it tells us the attachments must be a JPEG, PNG, or whatever else which will also hopefully work if I try to upload two files. Still says the same thing, message doesn't go through. If I try to just upload an image, test, that gives us the image again. Now let's go test our videos. So I'll come over to here, I'll include a video that's an MP4, a picture, a WAV file, I guess, and a PNG maybe. Seems like it's most of what we want to test. I'll just throw all of these in here and do ASDF as the message. That doesn't work. It was a PNG, a GIF, a video. It looks like the MP4 works. The WAV doesn't work. So let me go ahead and let me see why WAV doesn't work. Okay, we figured it out by going over to this list of tables that I believe this is based on. And in here, if we search for WAV, we get this lovely result, which totally is what my next guess was going to be for what this is called. GitHub also loves having a file this large. It is audio slash VND dot wave is what we needed for the WAV file type. Of course it is. So let me try to put this in here and see if this causes it to work better. We'll get rid of the comma. And then we'll add this in and I'll leave this in the video just so you can see me try to troubleshoot. That did not work. Okay, what if we instead just try WAV for this? Maybe it's only a audio form and that's what I'm getting wrong here. I hate everything. Okay, so I figured it out. It is actually, surprise, a pull request that got merged that overrode the new way of doing it, which I found with the old way of doing it. So it reverted the new way to the old way. So now you have to use audio slash X dash W A V if you want to host a WAV file. So I added in the audio slash X dash W A V into our content types. And now thanks to this PR from 2021, we are able to add in audio files. So let me try to do the video. Let me do a small video. The MP4, the WAV, a PNG, a JPEG. Uh, I guess we'll try all of these and we'll try to send them all. Test, oops, testy boy. We'll send all of those and we have the audio file, which sounds like I'm talking. We have the video. 
which is uh, as always super loud and we have all of the uh, images. Now let's try to do one more invalid file. Let's send the csproj and that doesn't work. So it looks like we now have the validations working along with uh, something learned about Marcel being the content type uh, repository and some of the stuff in the content type potentially being a little bit outdated. So I guess I'll leave a link to this content type in the video description, but I would also be aware that it might be outdated with some of the content types that it has. But that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this video was helpful, uh, and if it was, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.